Welcome to part six in the network security introduction. In this part, we'll be talking about infections and social engineering. So there are different ways to infect users with different kind of malware that we, uh, that we have discussed in the previous presentations. Here we'll cover some of the more important ones, namely drive-by infections um, and infections by running executable files. I will also describe something about social engineering and phishing. Um, so drive-by infections happens when the user is visiting a website. Uh, the con computer can be infected simply by visiting this, this website. So it doesn't have to, to do anything active. It doesn't have to download or install any execu executable files. There are different kinds of these websites. Some websites are made specifically with the aim of making an infection. And then you have the challenge in getting the users to these uh, malicious websites. But it can also be that you have completely legitimate websites which are infected by a third party, for example, because there is a, an unpatched vulnerability in that server. Um, yes. Uh, some well-known examples of the latter is actually there was a WordPress example, and if you want more details, you can Google it. Um, the problem was that there were 100,000 Word sites, um, WordPress sites that were comp compromised in December 2014 because they were using an outdated version and before they were unpatched, uh, criminals managed to infect um, all these machines. Then you have infections through executable, so you have ex executable files that you are downloading or getting in different way. It can be by email, through social media, on a USB disk, or simply downloaded from a website. And often, if, if you have an antivirus program installed, it will give you a warning. But the problem with this kind of warning is that the users tend to overwrite them. Um, in my opinion, also because the information they receive is not sufficient for them to make a decision. Um, and actually, this is leading us to the next topic, which is social engineering. Social engineering is all about tricking the user to do some something actively. For example, actually actively accepting to run infected files or, um, or scripts. And it's a kind of confidence trick where you try to gain the confidence of the user and then uh, trick him into doing something. And I think there are two important factors to mention here. One is that the user often doesn't have enough knowledge to know how to act when he sees a security warning. And secondly, the, the user decision might be impacted by the context, such as who is the sender, what kind of content is provided, and how personal is it. So if somebody, if somebody managed to have spyware on your computer so they know a lot of about what you're doing or you have been traveling and they can tell you, yeah, now that you're back from our hotel, please go to our website and fill in something. Um, uh, that can also be part of the trick. Um, the thing is with antivirus, if the user can overwrite it, it's all about tricking him into actually overwriting it, for example, to install a file. And there is one example here that um, the user is receiving a message on Facebook about watch this funny video. As soon as the user clicks on the video and is focused on the video, he receives the warning that he needs to update Flash Player. And Flash Player is something that we are so used to just updating that many users will try to, cl to click run here instead of saying no, which would be the, the good choice. So based on the yes, uh, then, then the user actually gives um, permission to install this, uh, this piece of malware. And there is another example here, which I will, do, which I will just show you. So that's a, small, that's a very short introduction to um, social engineering. Then we have phishing. And phishing is not strictly related to malware, uh, it's an, but it's an important, an important part of the overall cybercrime picture, where it's about tricking the, the user to provide different kind of information. So the idea is that you're tricking people to disclose private information, which could be social security numbers, credit card information, credential for authentication services such as the Danish uh, digital identity, uh, access to email accounts, social media sites, etc. Uh, and it comes in many forms. That could be emails, websites, and so on. Um, and probably you have, you have seen some examples already, like you receive an email from an administrator, please verify your account by sending us your username and password and so on. And if you are sending out this kind of information to a sufficient amount of people, you will always see that someone is being tricked into it. So here's an example of a phishing email from a Danish 
a payment provider where for example you can see that the, the sender doesn't really fit well the bill. Um, another example from PayPal which highlights some of the, the typ typical things you will see in phishing. For example that there is a generic greeting, uh, that there is a false sense of urgency. So you're told someone just did something or it seems that you have have uh, bought something please go to your account if it wasn't you so uh, so some information that is trying to to um, to get people to click straight away before they really get to think and then often there will be fake links meaning that if you try to move to move the mouse and see what is really on the link it will be different than what the link points to and again when providing these kind of links there is often quite a quite a quite a lot of creativity that PayPal could be spelled with a one instead of an L, so it really looks like the same, like the same website. Um, so that was a short introduction to um, to social engineering and phishing and infections. So now it's time to take quiz number five and then continue with the last part of the introduction afterwards. Thank you very much for following.